and welcome to Children's Church, your Children's Church connection right here at the New Beginnings United Methodist Church. I am your pastor, the Reverend John Baldwin II, and I am here with a very special lesson for you today. As you can see, we're not in our normal Children's Church background, but that's because we want to talk about something that is very near and dear to each and every one of us and to Christians all around the world. In fact, what we're talking about today has been a critical part of God's people's lives for more than 2,000 years. It's a very special meal. It goes by several different names. Some of it call it the Passover meal. Some of it call it the Last Supper. Others call it the Sacrament of Holy Communion. But it all talks about a very special occasion and a very special gift that God gives to God's people. Now, if you've been journeying with us over the past few weeks, you know we've talked about the Israelites that they journeyed through the desert. When they were out there at the Red Sea, trapped in Pharaoh's army was behind them. We also talked about when they got out there and they were hungry and then when they were thirsty and how God continued to provide for them. But before all of that happened, they were in bondage in Egypt. While they were in Egypt, many things happened to convince Pharaoh to let God's people go. Well, the last night that they were there, Moses told them, tomorrow you are going to be free. So hurry up and gather all of your things together. Prepare them. Pack up all of your stuff because tomorrow we as a people are going to move and we're going to head out towards the promised land that God has for us. Every year, they remembered that great night when all of them, all the people of Israel, were released from bondage and they would sit down and celebrate a meal just like the one that they had on that night when Moses gave them the news that they were going to be free. They would often have unleavened bread, which was usually a flat bread that did not have yeast in it to make it rise. They would have lamb because on that night they were told to slay a lamb and to smear the blood over the doorpost so that the angel would know that they were God's people. And they had several other herbs that were bitter and sweet and things like that. And so every year they would sit down and remember that wonderful night when God set them free. Well, this continued as a cherished tradition for hundreds of years. And on the night when it was towards the end of Jesus' life, he sat down with his disciples and he had that same meal, the Passover meal, with his disciples. And we were taught that after the meal was over, Jesus, he took the bread, the bread that was on the table that they had been eating, he took it. And he blessed it. He asked God's blessing and provision over that bread. And then the Bible says that he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Now, when we hear these words, we as the children of God, as the disciples of Jesus, we should be reminded that Jesus gave his life as a blessed sacrifice so that we could have access as a part of the body of Christ, so that we could be a part of God's family and experience the abundance of everlasting life and the joy that comes through our salvation in Jesus. When Jesus had broken the bread and given it to his disciples and told them to eat from it, he was reminding them that God loves you so much that God sent me to be given for you. We as the children of God, we should know that God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son that if we would believe in him, we should never perish, but we should have everlasting life. That comes from John 3.16. This meal reminds us that Jesus is that son that was given for us. After the bread, Jesus also took the cup that was sitting on the table and it had a wine or a grape juice in it. And he told his disciples here, drink from this all of you. This is the new covenant of my blood. This is the new 
privilege and blessing that comes from my life, and my life is poured out for you. You see, when Jesus came to the world, he came living and teaching us how we should care for each other, how we should find our hope and blessings and rely on God, how we as people of God should be concerned for each other, but how as we take on the character of Christ, the habits of Jesus, that we make the world a better place and that we become the inheritance of everlasting life with God in heaven. When Jesus takes that cup, he says, this is my life source. This is my blood, the very thing that gives me life. It is poured out so that you can have some too. He gives it to his disciples and he says, drink from it. Because what gives me life, I want it to give life to you as well. Each time we come to the table and we are offered this blessed meal, we remember that great sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We remember how much God loves us and cares for us so much that God would reach out and offer his son Jesus to each and every one of us. Now, there's nothing we could do to earn a spot at God's table. You can't be so good, you can't be so cute, you can't be so smart. There's nothing you can do to earn a spot at God's table. God has already placed a seat here for you, has already made a provision for you, has already given his son, Jesus, for you. That means it's a gift. And all we have to do is say yes and receive. When we partake of the body and the blood, the bread and the juice, we say, God, I thank you for your sacrifice. And I want to be one with you and with all those people around the world who remember your goodness and take part in doing your will in the world. This is our lesson this week. And I pray that you would know just how much God loves you. God gives to each of us freely each of his blessings because God wants us to know that God continually cares for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. When you come to the table, know that everlasting life is for you because God loves you. God bless you and keep you. I look forward to connecting with you in Children's Church next week as we start our lessons about the Ten Commandments. Take care.